Have you ever wondered what really goes on behind the grandeur of the British royal family? A new book, My Mother and I by Ingrid Seward, offers a tantalizing peek behind the royal curtains. Its primary focus is on the intricate relationship between King Charles and Queen Elizabeth II. Yet, in an unexpected twist, the initial excerpts delve into the dynamics of another royal duo, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. It seems we're seeing a trend where royal biographers are offering revised accounts of the royal family, painting a picture that is more complex and nuanced than the public facade. We're given a front row seat to the intricacies of royal relationships, the tensions, and the triumphs. And here's where things get particularly intriguing. It seems that Prince Philip, the stalwart companion of Queen Elizabeth II, harbored some reservations about Meghan Markle from their very first meeting. As it turns out, Prince Philip had some reservations about Meghan Markle, likening her to a controversial figure in royal history. Prince Philip, it seems, harbored reservations about Meghan Markle right from their first meeting. So states royal biographer Ingrid Seward in her new book, My Mother and I. As Seward tells it, the Duke of Edinburgh drew parallels between Meghan and Wallace Simpson, an American divorcee who played a pivotal role in the abdication of King Edward VIII. This historical echo seems to have cast a shadow over Philip's perception of the Duchess of Sussex. In contrast, Queen Elizabeth II extended a warm reception to Meghan. Her Majesty had high hopes for the couple's contributions to the Commonwealth, envisioning a new era of royal service. The Queen's optimism, however, did not quell Prince Philip's caution. He remained wary, even going so far as to refer to Meghan as the Duchess of Windsor. This moniker, a direct reference to Wallace Simpson, reveals the depth of Philip's concerns. This narrative paints a complex picture of the royal family's internal dynamics, one where personal perceptions and historical parallels intertwine. It's a fascinating glimpse into the private thoughts of a man who stood steadfastly by the Queen's side for over seven decades, and who played a significant role in shaping the modern monarchy. Of course, every story has more than one side. And as we delve deeper into this royal saga, it becomes clear that, despite the Queen's optimism, Prince Philip had his doubts, even referring to Meghan as the Duchess of Windsor. While the Queen generally refrained from expressing her thoughts about Meghan Markle, she did have a few private remarks. Known for her stoic demeanor and commitment to duty, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II rarely lets her personal opinions be known. But, as revealed by Ingrid Seward in her new book, the Queen did share some private thoughts about Meghan's wedding day choices. She found Meghan's Givenchy wedding gown too white for a divorced woman remarrying in a church. The Queen, with her decades of experience in royal protocol, might have expected a more subdued color palette. It's a subtle reminder that even in the seemingly progressive royal family, traditional norms still carry weight. Then there's the issue of Prince Charles stepping in for Meghan's absent father. While it was a touching gesture, the Queen harbored reservations. A father's role in a wedding is a cherished tradition, and substituting that role, even with a prince, was a deviation from the norm. Add to this Prince Philip's choice to walk down the Earl Sands walking stick, despite a recent hip surgery. The Queen and her consort's discomfort was visible during the extended sermon by American Archbishop Michael Curry. A departure from the typically succinct Anglican sermons, this lengthy discourse was yet another break from tradition. Though silent in public, the Queen had her thoughts, and not all of them were in favor of the new Duchess. Despite outward appearances, it seems even the Queen had her reservations. As with anything royal, controversy is expected to follow these revelations. Critics may jump on Prince Philip's initial skepticism of Meghan to portray broader issues within the royal family. However, context is crucial here. The comparisons drawn between Meghan and Wallace Simpson, the American divorcee who caused King Edward VIII to abdicate, are tenuous at best. Wallace and Meghan's situations were vastly different, and to equate them is to simplify the complexities of their individual experiences. Moreover, it's important to note that Prince Philip was recovering from hip surgery around the time of Harry and Meghan's wedding. His physical state may have understandably influenced his perceptions and interactions during this time. This doesn't excuse, but rather provides context to his initial reservations. 
While the royal family continues to fascinate us, it's always essential to remember that the truth often lies somewhere in between the lines of these grand narratives. Stay tuned for the next Majesty Moments video, King Charles' heartbreaking cancer revelation.